Hi, I am Bradley Hall. I am sorry that I couldn't be with you this year. Last year, attending the MPE Fellowship Retreat was one of the uh, pivotal moments in my my healing journey as an MPE. I hope you you are finding the conference uh, to be the same for you. To be quite honest, I am also an NPE and I was invited to tell my, share my story with you and I'd, I'd like to do that. As I said last year, the, this retreat was a pivotal moment in my MPE journey. There, there are many reasons why, but the connection with our people, with the tribe was no doubt the most critical. And I, I, I hope that you've, you've found that to be true as well not only within the group, but this weekend. I know you're hearing from some amazing people this weekend. Uh, I want to encourage you to take it all in and think about what everyone else is saying. E even, even if it doesn't make sense and it doesn't click, it doesn't yet resonate, I, I promise you it will. Please trust the process. Trust these people and trust this group. So my story, my MP status was confirmed in December of 2017. Now, like many of you on some level, I suspected this for a long time. And when I was growing up, I would often joke that I was adopted and particularly with my girlfriend who is now my wife of 30 years. I was actually I began to hear rumors when I was younger, and I actually had a conversation with my birth certificate father in 2004 when he told me that he suspected that I may not be his son. And I, I approached my mother about this, and um, she denied it vehemently, actually uh, calling my birth certificate father a liar uh, with plenty of explicatives and other adjectives to go along with that. Now, my birth certificate father offered to, to take a DNA test. And at the time, for that very reason, that's actually why I chose not to take a DNA test. Because he had offered, because that's the type of person he was. And it, it, as I look, it's water under the bridge. As I look back on it now, I would change it. Not part of the story. I chose not to do that. Uh, fast forward to 2000, December of 2017. And my wife and I decided to do the DNA test to discover our heritage. We had some friends who had recently taken a DNA test, discovered their heritage. They'd shared it with their family uh, and had some fun with it. And we had an idea to have some fun during our Christmas uh, get-together, the gathering with our family. So what I didn't expect, and I'm sure you've heard, heard this story uh, a time or two as well in the group, I didn't know that there was another side to this, that they would connect me with relatives that I was connected to with DNA. And as I stared at the screen, I didn't recognize more than half the names. I actually called my mother and, and uh, she dismissed it saying I didn't know how to spell my father's, uh, biological father's last name. Uh, it was a foreign last name, and she she tried to blow it off with that, which wasn't the case. We all know that, um, and questioned the results. I called my birth certificate father, and he simply said that he wasn't surprised. So, um, from there, I was really confused. I sent out messages. I got very little response. I didn't know where to go. I had a name, but it was a very common name, a very common name, one of the most common names in, in the United States. So I didn't have much luck with it. I, I just poked around. I was busy. A few months went by. And finally, one day I snapped. And I ended up literally staying up all night long, doing research, making notes, drawing, drawing maps, genealogy maps, and, and this and that. And I was able to, to take some of the connections I had with some of the pieces of, of the uh, family trees that I had access to and piece together uh, a genealogical map to some degree to come up one side and, and back down, but I couldn't, I couldn't quite make a connection. I just 
fell short where I knew where it was, but I wasn't sure because I, I didn't know what I was looking at. And uh, God bless my wife. She woke up, uh, came out and I, you know, just was confused, had no idea why I was still up. I hadn't been to bed in the same clothes. If I had hair, it would have been sticking up. My eyes were probably bloodshot. And she asked me what I was doing. I explained to her and uh, having a, a restful night's sleep and uh, being clear headed and not being obsessed. Uh, she sat down with her phone and within minutes had an obituary for uh, a name that matched the name that I have for my father that suddenly matched everything else. I was able to piece everything together. I sent a message to the closest connection that I had within minutes. She responded telling me that my biological father was one of her favorite people in the world, that he was her first cousin and she opened up her family tree and, uh, of, she was a, she, uh, fortunately for me, she is an amateur genealogist. So she opened up a family tree of over 40,000, uh, listings profiles. And the, uh, you know, the gates from heaven opened and the lights shone down and the choir sung and uh, there, there it was. Everything was completely right in front of me. Um, you know, and I look back at that night and I, I, even though I knew I was still fighting it mentally, I was still trying to keep the old connection and, and, and I think that was preventing me from making certain strides and, and I, I I talk to a lot of a lot of you and that have the same thing and and we see what we want to see our perception is very powerful it dictates our reality it's not the focus of 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 what I'm here to talk to you about today but it is something that I do I do speak about regularly um and this was certainly the case so um when I at first, I was very sad and upset when I when I first discovered it, and I called my father, and he said he wasn't surprised. Uh, I actually I actually cried on the phone, and uh, and I apologized to him, and I'll talk more about that here here in a bit. As most of you saw during the CBS interview, I had stated that my mother was completely unapproachable, and uh, she still is be quite honest. She has denied and denied. She's blamed everyone else. Uh, after admitting it uh, loosely, <laughs> uh, she later claimed she didn't know until I told her that she was completely blindsided and um, that she, to quote her, she was surprised as I was. And uh, this went on and on for almost a year. And we are we are currently no contact, and I, I know that many of you uh, are experiencing the same thing. And 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 I want to let you know that I'm I'm sorry for that, but you're not alone. And if it's the best thing for your mental health, then uh, then I'm happy for you that you you've been able to do that. If you're struggling with that decision, uh, then I also empathize with that. You're all, you're not alone. There's people here that you can talk to that that can help you make that decision and, and navigate through it. Um, so my mother currently blames my, my BCF. Um, now, now, now she's blaming my BCF. She's accepted it. She has no choice. The data is there. Every, the word's out. Everyone knows. Now she's claiming my, my birth certificate. She's blaming my birth certificate father, actually. Um, she's saying that since he suspected that I may not be his when I was younger, uh, that it's his fault for not telling me. It's his fault that her and I aren't speaking, and it's his fault that I didn't get to meet my my uh, biological father uh, when I was younger because he didn't bother to tell me. So as I uncovered the layers of the story, suddenly everything in my childhood began to make sense. It all began to click. Even I, I had been confused. I'd had questions, but when this happened, I had, I had questions answered. I didn't even realize that I'd had at the time, but it suddenly all made sense. I understood why my mother quarreled with her family members over the years. We'd often go, um, we'd often go years without speaking to family members. Uh, and I, I was, we were told that, that it was their fault, that they were just not good people. I understand why I was treated differently. Uh, and most importantly, I understood why I was different. Uh, just plain and simple. 
And now suddenly I began to understand why my relationship with my mother was extremely unhealthy and that it had been for a very, very long time. I also understood that I didn't deserve any of this. You don't deserve any of this. But unfortunately, we inherited it. <laughs> literally. We literally inherited it. Um, pun intended. But the curious thing is, is that now we're forced with a decision. And that decision is we can deal with things the way they are. We can try to make others happy. We can run around serving everyone else's interests. We can uh, continue to keep their secrets. We can, we can uh, hide ourselves like we are a secret not to be told. Um, really all this is, is trying to make everyone else like us. And there's something I say regularly that, um, it's not, it's not your job to make people like you or it's to rather, I'm sorry. It's not your, our job to m make people happy. It's our job to make ourselves happy. And when we're happy, then we share that joy with others. And we need to be very careful to not get those two things confused because when we get those two things confused, no one is happy. If we're continually trying to serve, make other people happy, they continually want something else to make them happy. So they're never happy. And if we're continually serving people just to make them happy and we're foregoing our needs and our own happiness, then we become resentful and we're not happy. So the trick is to make ourselves happy and, uh, and share that joy. And then those who want to celebrate in that with us can do so. And those who don't, don't have to. It's very simple. Easier said than done, but it's very simple. So what happened was from here, I took ownership <clears throat> of this. Now, when people hear someone say the phrase, they own it, for example, most, most immediately just think of, of admitting something, right? To own up to it. Stop playing games to, to acknowledge it, that kind of thing. But I want to take a look at the word ownership. Okay. By definition, the word ownership is the act, state, or right of possessing something. Okay. And the key word here is possessing. So if we go look at the definition of possession. Possession is the state of having, owning, or controlling something. Okay. Now we, we know what to have means. We've already discussed what owning means. It's kind of a, uh, we've kind of looped back here, but so I think the key word here is controlling. And when we look at the definition of controlling, okay. Or the definition of control, control is defined as to exercise restraining or directing influence over or to regulate. B is to have power over or rule. And C is to reduce the incidence of severity of especially to innocuous levels. And by the way, innocuous means not harmful. So this last one, we're reducing the incidence to levels that aren't harmful to us. Okay. So this is what I did. I, t I took ownership of this whole thing. It's mine. I took it. I took my results. I took my confusion. I took my pain. I took my anger. I took all of those feelings. I took my responsibility for my own happiness. I took my responsible f responsibility for my own inner peace. I took it all. I owned it. I began to regulate it. I was stingy. I was no longer sharing. Okay. It's mine. I shared it unwittingly for far too long. I took ownership of my past, my present, and most importantly, my future. And that's when something magical began to happen. That's when the transformation really began. Now, 
I'm not going to get into the details of my transformation. My transformation really started about 15 years ago, a major turning point in my entire life. And I began healing. And in a major and dramatic way, that's another conversation for another time. But, so it's pretty significant when I tell you that I the transformation began to happen again. This was another major evolution in my life. Okay, And that transformation was, is I when I took control of it, and I began to own it, and, and I was going to decide what I was going to do with it, I began to feel liberated. I began immediately to shed guilt, to shed shame, to shed fear, and conditioned responses, all of it went out the window. And those are important ones that I'm sure you probably heard or will hear this weekend, especially the guilt, the shame, and the fear. All right, they, they are very powerful drivers that force us to make decisions that benefit other people and sacrifice our own happiness. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you those things are gone. They're, they're very heavily conditioned. Okay, they take a long time. It's a journey. It's not a destination. You've heard that in other instances. It's a journey, not a destination. You, we're never just going to get somewhere. We get a little bit better every day. And I'm sure you'll hear that from these amazing people this weekend as well. But... I began to shed the guilt, more guilt, more shame, more fear, and conditioned responses, and I began to change. I began to do what I needed to do to heal. Not what my mother wanted me to do, not what anyone else thought I should do, but what I thought I needed to do. And it's called self-care. Now, <clears throat> The reality is, is I, I can sit here and 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 blow this up and and you know uh, be I, I, like like some kind of a conference. And I can get you to raise your hands and, and dance in the aisle and, and scream. But the reality is, is this is very scary. Okay, it's a very positive transformation. It's a very necessary transformation. But it's very scary. I'm not I'm not going to lie. I, I want I want you to know that because I've lived that, I understand what you're going through. Each of our circumstances are different. But I know this is scary. Condition, breaking condition responses are scary because with conditioning, no matter how negative, we under, it's comfortable. We know what's coming. We know where it's coming from. When we change something, then it's unknown. And the unknown is scary. That's human nature. It involves, this involves being, becoming mindfully aware being aware of just how conditioned that we become to dance in someone else's theatrical production. And then it requires stepping out of the normalized comfort zone and doing something different, a different dance in your own theatrical production. And something that's going to be admonished and ridiculed. And that is, that is the power people try to use over you to ridicule you and shame you and guilt you into doing what they want you to do, which is not necessarily what's best for you. Okay, so doing this will change everything. But I want to let you in on a little secret. Okay, what we've all discovered, that what we have in common here, what we have all discovered here is this. It all boils down to this right here. Pay very close attention. You have discovered, we have discovered that what we thought it was, was never really what it was to begin with. What you thought was your life, your personality, what you thought was real was never really what, what, what you thought it was to begin with. Does that make sense? And the reason is, is our reality is based on our perception. Who we thought we were doesn't exist anymore. Not in the purest sense any, in any way. Okay? It, we thought we were this person, and then we found out that, that the results said that we really weren't this person. Our identity was, was, was wrapped up in these things uh, that, that we thought. But that's okay. And it's actually, it's more than okay. Okay. The beauty about all this is that we created who we thought we were. Whether you realize this or not, you created your identity. 
you've done that over the years by we, I'm no different, everyone else in this room, everyone else outside the room, everyone else all the way down in into Austin or wherever you came from and all the way back to your home, everybody, everybody, everybody creates their own identity. And we do that by accepting the information, advice, and opinions of everyone around us. The entire time we're growing up, we accept those those things and we we mold it all together in here and create this persona of who we are. And that, that is a factual statement. Okay? So, for many of us, for many of us, for many different reasons, and when I say many of us, we can go back to just all those people I just mentioned before. But let's bring it back down into this room and, 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 and this issue that we're dealing with here. For many of us, it wasn't based on truthful information. That's why we're here. But here's the blessing. Here's the blessing in all of this. If, and I'm going to say if, as a gratuitory message, uh, method, because, um, because we did. But if you created who you thought you were, then, albeit unknowingly, imagine what you can do now with the truth. Because with this information that you have now, you now see that the emperor has no clothes. He's naked as a jaybird. And everyone else who is playing along is still a fool. Okay, you have the truth. You can't, you know, once you once you take something out of its original, you, you purchase something, you take it out of its original packaging, you can't put it back in the packaging the way it came out. That's just life. It's just the way it works. And this is this is where you're at now. But again, back to the blessing. Now you know you have the truth. You're armed with the truth. And I mean, say it with me here. The truth, the truth shall set you free. Okay? We know better. And as Maya Angelou said, we do what we can until we know better. And when we know better, we do better. Well, now we know better. And now's your opportunity to do better. And when I say do better, you know, I don't mean that with a comparison. I just mean with an honesty, with the truth, with your eyes wide open now. Okay. So now we stand armed with the truth. We have a fork in the road. One, one, is, one is the path that we've already been down. It's regret, shame, never ending pain. The path leads back over the same terrain that we've already been going over our entire lives. The other is the path, it's the direct path to being who you want to be, to be who you need to be, and to be who you were born to be. And as I said, it's not easy. Change is always hard. It's a lot easier to just want things to go back to the way they were. But they can't. And accepting that is the first step. And this growth, this is where the term growing pains come from. You are, you are growing. And you may not have made this choice willingly, but here we are. And as many of you have, are already aware, uh, your circle of friends and circle of family may change. Obviously, you know, we have new family members potentially uh, that we may or may not have uh, a new relationship with. Um, but, you know, in, in this instance, if, you, if we lose friends, if we lose family members, if we, if we find new family members that don't want anything to do with us, there's going to be mourning involved. We're going to mourn the living. You can mourn the living. You can mourn relationships. You can mourn, you can mourn uh, potential relationships of, of how you would like things to be. And just because people are maybe toxic and not good for us doesn't mean that there aren't strong emotions involved with that. It doesn't mean that we don't love them. What it does mean is that you've made a choice to love yourself and put yourself first. And despite being told that's wrong. 
and again, I'll repeat what I said earlier that, that it's not your job to make other people happy. It's your job to make yourself happy. And then once you make yourself happy, share that joy with the people around you and let them decide whether they want to partake in that or not. Okay. Because if you get the two confused, you're not going to make anyone happy. I want you to think about that. Think about who it is you're trying to make happy. And is it you? Or is it everyone else around you? And I know it's not that black and white. When you get into talking about, uh, when we talk about, do we tell, and particularly the one that I hear the most is telling a birth certificate father that doesn't know. And that is that is a, a painful decision. And the only advice that that I can give you or anyone else should give you for that matter, in my opinion, is that you need to do what's best for you, whatever that looks like. And I'm just challenging you to dig into that to make sure the decision is best for you. And whatever decision you decide to make, if you can look me in the eye and tell me that it is what's best for you, me and everyone else in this room will support you 100%. That's a promise. When we, when we, when you bought your DNA kit, you thought you were buying the test. But we now know, in hindsight, that we were actually buying our true identity. So you bought it. Now I want you to own it. I want you to use it and become who you were born to be. Literally. Because as I've shown you here today, you get to decide. You get to make the choice. And now you understand when you hear me say that being blessed is a choice. I want to wish you all the best. Uh, I'm here for you. I, I wish I was here, here for you. Uh, but I am here for you. You should have my contact information uh, in front of you or available. Um, I also want to let you know uh, I'm I'm a certified trauma recovery coach with the uh, with the wonderful Bobby Parrish. Um, I am a holistic life coach and a mindful certified mindfulness instructor. Uh, I, I I recently did some mindfulness sessions last summer for the NPE group. They're available in in another subgroup, but I also made them available on one of my websites for free to NPE people. Um, I can get you that link. Uh, I, I think some of uh, some some of the people in the group have the link. I can get you that link. It's very easy to do. Um, they, again, they're free, and you'll never be charged for them. Uh, go to my website. Uh, you can go to my website and click on the NPE link for more information. Uh, you have to give me your name and your address. It's the way the internet works. But I will fire back an email that will have some NPE uh, resources and links, including the fellowship uh, on there. But it it has the link to the the mindfulness videos. Um, or you can send me an email to customercare at thebradleyhall.com. Uh, and of course, you can also find me on Facebook and YouTube. So again, thank you for, uh, for your attention. And uh, thank, I want to thank Catherine and Rebecca for letting me speak. Uh, I want to thank uh, Paulette and Bobby for being such, having such a tremendous impact on my journey. I want to thank all of you for being my friends and trusting uh, trusting me and trusting all these people here. And I hope I get a chance to, uh, to at least meet all of you online and hopefully soon in person. So uh, I'll talk to you soon. Until then, take care of yourself.